skies may be gray and aim free, but it's good racing weather for the greatest steeple chase of them all, the Grand National. As the field of 35 await their jockeys, it's beginning to rain. But what punter minds getting a little wet so long as the going's firm? For once, there's no doubt about the favorite, Gusander, whose call-over price fell as low as 9 to 2. There's a lot of money on him, and a lot of bookies keeping their fingers crossed. In fact, what with a dangerous favorite and a determined Mrs. Topham, who'd be a bookie? But never mind him, they're all lined up for the start. And they're off! Half a dozen take the lead right away. Sunview, Armorial, the Crofter, Hart Royal, Rendezvous, much obliged. And here comes the first fence. Hart Royal's down, and Rendezvous, and Virginius. And now it's Sunview in the lead. But he's closely pressed by Armorial, the Crofter, and much obliged. Not much in it between Sunview and Armorial, a horse who led the field for so long last year only to fall five jumps from home. Coming up to jump number three, and the leaders all take it safely. Armorial's leading Sunview now, and Cherry Abbott's moving up to third place. Jump number four, still Armorial, Sundew, Cherry Abbott with low. Armorial's down, now it's Sundew, Cherry Abbott, Athenian. Sundew still leading over the fifth jump and going nicely, but the next jump is the dreaded beaches where Sundew came to grief last year. He stumbled, no, he's up, and the field's streaming after him, thinning out a bit now. There's Irish Lizard taking a tumble, and up in front, Sundew's leading Gentle Moyer and Red Menace over the seventh. Now the canal turn with its awkward left-hand swerve. This time it proves too much for Fahrenheit and Mokata. Coming up to Valentine's Brook, jump number nine, where our slow-motion camera shows Sundew, Red Menace, and Athenian leading the field. Over jump number ten, Athenian and Gentle Moyer have moved up behind Sundew. Red Menace is down. Athenian is keeping up the pressure on Sundew, but jockey Fred Winter seems unworried. He's holding the lead comfortably and riding a magnificent race. And there's Gentle Moyer in third place. Number 13, still Sundew and Athenian, followed by Gentle Moyer and China Clipper, with the Crofter moving up. Approaching the stands near the end of the first time round, and Sundew showing no signs of tiring yet. Ah, oh, nasty fall here. Over the water jump, it's Sundew, Athenian, and last year's winner, ESB, in third place, followed by the Crofter. <laughs> Rounding the corner for the second circuit, Athenian pressing Sundew very hard, but there are 14 fences to go yet. Sundew's holding the lead from Athenian as they approach jump number 17. And behind them are the Crofter, ESB, and China Clipper. Sundew is about a length ahead of Athenian at jump number 18, and the rest not far behind. Fred Winters held the lead for all but a few yards of the race, and nobody can say he hasn't been challenged. But there's never been more than a length or two in it, but he's keeping his place like a real champion. safely, and now for jump number 20. Still the same order, but ESB is battling to improve his position, and the favorite Cusander is moving up too. Over jump 
21 with the gap closing slightly. Features again. Our near thing for Athenian. He holds his second place, but ESB, China Clipper, and the Crofter are on his tail. And at the canal turn, he loses it. Now it's Sundew, ESB, and the Crofter with Athenian lying fourth. Coming up to Valentine's, and now it's China Clipper trying to make a challenge. With only five jumps to go, Sundew is still leading comfortably, but behind him a fierce battle is raging. Weinberg is moving up, and so is the grey, glorious 12th. Jumps number 27, and it's Sundew, ESB, Weinberg, and the Crofter. Three fences from home, and Glorious Twelfth is fighting it out with the crofter. No one seems able to make any impression on the leader, but there's still trouble brewing for somebody. Sundew takes the last but one, followed by ESB, the crofter, Weinberg, and Glorious Twelfth. Only a dozen left in it now, but as we saw last year, till the race is won, anything can happen. Now Sandy has cleared the last fence and is racing ahead up the final straight. Six lengths in hand and still drawing away. And this time there are no last minute disasters. Sandy is finishing in splendid style, way out of reach of Weinberg, Tiberetta and Glorious Twelfth, who haven't a hope of catching him now. There's the post and a magnificent victory for Sandy and his jockey Fred Winter. Sundew's been in the National twice before, and Fred three times. Until today, neither of them has ever managed to finish. But they've put that right with a vengeance. Usually, luck plays a big part in a Grand National. But this is one of the times when a fine horse and a fine jockey have won simply by riding a first-class race. Mrs. Jeffrey Cohn, the owner, can be proud of them both. And we can be grateful to them for a grand national worthy of Aintree's best.